As a groundbreaking girl journalist in the 1960s, she dared to blaze a trail in a man's world, traveling to war zones and often going undercover. And her latest book offers a bold look on all of life's passages. Welcome to Emotional Mojo, Gail Sheehy. Welcome, Gail. I'm so happy to be here. And you know, my emotional mojo comes from Daring, which is the title of my book. So this is the perfect show for me. Absolutely. We'd love to talk about that book. As you mentioned, it's titled Daring, My Passages. And as a journalist, I mean, you've dared to expose many social taboos like prostitution and civil rights in Northern Ireland and the gamut in between. Which story are you most proud of covering? Oh, I would say um, I'm probably most proud of covering menopause because nobody spoke about it in the 70s. Uh, it was a completely taboo subject. Actually, it was 1990, uh, and I had to go on talk shows, and poor men were suddenly, you know, <laughs> told that they had to talk about what? Yeah. <laughs> but it broke through, and women began going to their doctors and saying, hey, I know more about this than I think you, maybe you know, and I want you to measure my hormones and talk to me about how I deal with this passage in my life. Isn't it amazing, something like that? I mean, today you could see an entire show talking about menopause, yet in your day, in that time, it was such a taboo topic. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think, of course, I'm most proud of my book, Passages, because <clears throat> that gave so many people permission to change, to do change in their lives, which is exactly what a passage is. And we come upon those times of emotional mojo uh, failing, you know, diminishing, and we don't quite know why. Why don't things work the way they used to? Why aren't I as happy with my job as I am? What's going wrong? What's, ha what's, what's, where's the hollow in my marriage? Why don't my kids respect me? And then you have to, you know, develop another mode, uh, move forward, change, and the change actually takes you into the next stage and you've grown. I mean, you have just described what our entire show is based upon. And I'd love to get your opinion on something because clearly you put yourself in dangerous situations as a journalist traveling to foreign countries. And with the recent stories of journalist kidnappings, I mean, at what point do you make the decision not to travel to cover a story? Well, I would have a hard time today, uh, you know, with journalists having their being beheaded or having their hands cut off or being in prison for years. Uh, it's a much more dangerous world for journalists. Uh, when I went to Northern Ireland and got in the middle of the crossfire between the British Army and uh, IRA sharpshooters and almost got killed myself, I didn't go knowing that that was going to be what happened to me. Uh, and it colored my life and gave me the idea for passages. Uh, but today I would have a great pause Although I know <clears throat> that our country goes way out of its way to save people who uh, may not be the most um, responsible characters, but we will always try to protect our own. Yeah, yeah, and you know, your book, we've got to talk about this as well because it's also a love story of your romance with Clay Felker, the yeah. creator of New York Magazine. How did he inspire you to become a fearless journalist? Well, he challenged me right from the beginning. He said, you know, Gail, writing a, a lot of little stories won't get you anywhere, no matter how good they are. People won't remember them. What you have to do is tackle a big story, something everybody's talking about, but they don't know the why. Uh, and that gave me, you know, a pointer for how to go about stories. Later, I had Margaret Mead as a, uh, the great anthropologist, as a mentor. Um, Helen Gurley Brown at Cosmopolitan gave me some of my earliest stories. And then I worked with some of the best journalists of my era, uh, Gloria Steinem, Tom Wolfe, uh, Nora Ephron, uh, and Clay Felker started New York Magazine where we started something new, the first city magazine and new journalism, which is now called long form journalism, telling stories, using scenes and dialogue and making stories exciting. Well, thank and that you. made our lives together exciting. Well, you know what? You are such an inspiration. I want to thank you. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but I would love for people at home to check out the book. It is called Daring, and it's available now in bookstores and online, or you can visit the website, gailsheehy.com. Thank you, Gail.